After a storm in the state of Florida, it is common to see treasure seekers scattered on the sands, hoping to find a remnant from the numerous Spanish shipwrecks off the coast. Now there is believed to be somewhere around 1,200 to 2,000 wrecks up and down this coast, so it would seem the chances are not that slim, as a good number of these wrecks date back to the days when ships, heavy with gold and silver, set about from the Spanish main. From the 16th to the 18th centuries, companies of vessels would assemble in Havana, Cuba in preparation to sail. The preferred route was through the Strait of Florida to hitch a ride north on the Gulf Stream. Once reaching the Carolinas, they picked up the westerlies to be driven home to Europe. The fated fleet that left Havana in 1715 consisted of 11 ships, a far cry from the Spanish heyday when there would have been a hundred or more. Despite the diminished fleet, there was still a multitude of treasure to be transported, including gold, silver, and Chinese crafts that had been transported across the Pacific, and then by muleback across Mexico. Spoiler alert! There was too much cargo and too few ships, and to top it off, they sailed straight into a hurricane just seven days out of Havana. Ten of the eleven ships went down, as well as more than a thousand men and goods then valued at 20 million. By 2021 standards, that's 1.2 billion. The Spaniards quickly organized a large-scale salvage operation, which included a camp at Cape Canaveral and a storehouse to hold the salvaged goods. To complicate matters, news of the wreck spread quickly to Jamaica, and that could only lead to one outcome. Pirates. Captain Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard, and Captain Henry Jennings, among others, subsequently attacked the camp and made off with thousands of pieces of eight. Despite all of this, one-third of the treasure made it back to Havana with the Spaniards by 1719. The unrecovered portion waited patiently beneath the coastal waters for some 250 years until the wrecks once again entered the spotlight as part of a very long and lucrative treasure hunt. Fast forward to 1949, a man named Kip Wagner, a name unknown to most but soon known to many, was a new resident to the Florida coast. After hearing stories from friends about finding the odd coin on the beach, he became very interested and quickly became an amateur treasure hunter. He purchased a mine detector from an army surplus store for $15, that's $162 by today's standards. Using the mine detector on a stretch of beach 25 miles south of Cape Canaveral, he found numerous coins dating from 1649 to 1715. The coins were concentrated in various locations along the shoreline, leading him to formulate theories about the location of the wrecks. Kip Wagner, along with an associate, Dr. Kip Kelso, conducted extensive research regarding the history of the wrecks that stretched from Florida to the shores of Spain. In the years that followed, they discovered cannonballs, anchors, coins, rings, diamonds, and fragmented as well as fully intact Chinese porcelain. Oh, and they also discovered the location of many of the wrecks. One of the more interesting finds throughout the years of this treasure hunt was discovered in the sand by Kip Wagner's nephew after a storm. It was an 11 and a half foot gold chain made up of 2,176 links. Attached to the chain was a gold dragon. A gold toothpick was hinged to its back. The tail served as an ear pick. Extraordinary finds continued over the years motivated by Wagner's success and still continue today. Thousands and thousands of artifacts and precious treasure have been recovered, inspiring a romantic, well-earned moniker for this stretch of Florida sands, Treasure Coast. <laughs>